Good morning, church. Um, welcome. Here we are in 2022. Can you believe it? The first Sunday. And uh, we're sitting in our garden and we just thought that today we'd just um, have a relaxed uh, chat, Jen and I. And um, really, we want to talk about some things that we discussed. Um, well, a, sm a small thing that we discussed on our trip up the Western Cape, and we're so pleased to be back. And really, it's a, it's a bit about uh, making something that is meaningful and um, maybe even traditional in our lives um, going forward. And uh, before we do that, um, I'm sure Jen wants to open in prayer. So, well, before I do yeah. that, I just want to say a very happy birthday to you, David. It's David's birthday today. And uh, can you believe it? I'm married to an old man. He's 60. And I'm still in my 50s for four months. He's, a, he's, a four, he's 60 and I'm 59. But happy birthday, my darling. I love you. And I hope today is going to be a really special day. I'm going to cook David a roast, which is what he wanted. And we're going to celebrate with the family. And the nice thing about my birthday is that I can choose whatever I like. So I'm going to ask Jen to sing to me happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> you want to open in prayers? Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> Father, we just thank you for who you are in our lives and that we can sit out in our gardens and enjoy the beautiful sunshine. And we thank you for the rain in abundance, I believe, that we've had. And uh, we just thank you for who you are, you are in our lives. I pray for a blessing over David as he celebrates his birthday. And I just thank you for who he is in our lives. And uh, I, just, I just pray that he will have an incredible year, um, that his faith will grow, and that he be, would become more of the man that you created him to be. And I pray for a, a blessing on this um, get-together as we uh, meet over um, our TVs and phones. And a blessing on every uh, one who's listening to this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and uh, that you're ready to face an exciting year, uh, an exciting year for the church, I think. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think Jen is going to kick off. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we love um, about uh, journeying somewhere is the journey itself. We've always loved to drive somewhere because we get to chat and discuss things and plan and dream and it's always been a very special time for us. And so it was, um, we've just toured the uh, west coast, which we'd never done before. And what a beautiful um, part of the world it is. Completely different, of course, to KZN, which is so green. And also, can you believe it, that we had the most wonderful weather yes. while you guys had lots of rain. So we were incredibly <laughs> blessed. And yeah, we I don't know how that happened, but yeah, we, we were very fortunate. And yeah. Had a wonderful time. We yeah. really did. Yeah. So um, in our travels and while we were, we were chatting, we were talking about how sometimes significant events come and go. And they, because of the busyness of life, and uh, think we get distracted they go without us actually stopping and pausing and um, remembering uh, what's actually happening taking stock you know so that was really that's what we want to chat to you about today how do you in your walk with the Lord create more richness and um, and not just be going through your life fighting fires, so to speak, uh, and sorting out problems, but actually creating a wealth of, uh, in, in your families and in your faith. So that's what we thought maybe would be quite nice. And I think, you know, um, just on that, we've just been through um, a significant celebration being the birth of Christ. Yeah. And um, was that a really significant day? for us as families or were we caught up um, in the modern world of uh, cooking, celebrating, having family, opening presents and losing 
the actual message of what it was. So those yeah. are the sort of things that we were thinking and uh, whether we can't just change that in this year. So yeah, Jen's yeah. going to share the book of Esther. Yes, so <laughs> there's just a few little thoughts that we had that might help you to remember, you know, I always think when, when I think of a message like we're going to share now uh, about Daniel, I always think of him mm. and how he prayed three times a day. And he had certain things that he did um, to keep himself on course. And so I recently read the book of Esther uh, towards the end of last year. And if you haven't read it for a while, really suggest you pick it up. It's such a short book, but it's a wonderful book of courage and faith and how Life can be really, really hard, but incredible things can come from it, you know. So, um, I'm not going to summarize the book, but uh, just towards the end, as we know from the story, Esther saves the Jews from extermination by an act of bravery and by confronting the king. And um, as a result of that, this is what Mordecai says. I'm going to read it straight from the Bible. Mordecai was, had adopted Esther, so that was her adoptive father, and he was like uh, the An king's advisor. chief advisor. Mm. Yeah, so mm. let me read it. So it's, it's from uh, chapter 10 of Esther, and it's, Mordecai recorded these events and sent letters to the Jews near and far throughout all the king's provinces encouraging them to celebrate an annual festival on these two days. He told them to celebrate these days with feasting and gladness and by giving gifts to each other and to the poor. This would commemorate a time when the Jews gained relief from their enemies, when their sorrow was turned into gladness and their mourning into joy. And isn't it interesting here when you read the how they did it uh, with feasting and gladness and by giving gifts to each other and to the poor. Sounds a lot like Christmas, doesn't it? But this little section in chapter 10 is entitled The Festival of Purim. And um, we were so fortunate when we, just by chance, we happened to be in Jerusalem at the Festival of Purim. And so we got to see firsthand this festival taking place. And what an incredible thing it was. Um, there were pluses and minuses about it, to be honest, because there was a lot of festivities, a lot of drinking. I think, you know, one of the things that we, we realized there is that, um, that it was a very special festival. And we were actually right in the center of the old Jerusalem on a square. And uh, we watched a rabbi um, sitting in the square on a small stool with uh, kids um, all around him as he was telling the story of Esther. And, and yet around him were the people um, all in fancy dress, um, walking around with their drinks and whatever, um, celebrating it and perhaps missing what the celebration was about. And there was a contrast between the, 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 the meaningful rabbi with the kids and those that were just having a party, if you like. And uh, I think that sometimes over Christmas, um, we, 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 we could be very similar to what we witnessed yeah. at that square. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were blown away by mm. just seeing the uh, traditional Jews and uh, passing down, wanting the next generation of children to know what happened all those years ago um, in Esther's days. And so, um, what we were thinking is how in our lives we could have similar things, sim similar festival days um, to record and, <clears throat> and to, to give thanks for. And so one such one that we thought of <clears throat> excuse me, is um, the fact that we are living here on this farm. Just uh, while, while Jane's talking about living on the farm, you can hear we've got aeroplanes going over and that could be our friend Graham, he's, I think it's him, um, flying over <laughs> just to see what we're up to. Um, but what I was actually thinking is when I was flying with Graham some time back, there was nobody in the skies. 
um, with the COVID and everything else. So actually, as much as that's a bit of a pain coming over, it's actually a, a celebration that there's actually flights again. So yeah, any Jen was saying? Yeah, so um, I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, so we thought that um, how for all the years of our marriage, we have been looking to live on a farm. We have gone to so many properties. When we lived in England, we went to a whole mm. lot of small holdings. And uh, we then, when we moved back here, we looked in the Berg and in the Midlands and all over the place. Even and we, Burn Valley. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just never, ever mm. uh, came about. And then when this property, where we're sitting right now, came up for sale and David came to, to see if he could help sell it, he said, he came home and he said, Jen, I found the property we've been looking for. And I came here and it just, I just knew this was the one. And so um, through quite a difficult uh, set of circumstances, we ended up uh, living here. And what a blessing it has been to us. You know, it's our heart's desire. And so wouldn't it be nice for us every year to get together with whichever family happens to be here at the time, sit around the table, have a meal, talk about the events around uh, how we got the, got, came to live here, and, um, and to pray and to give thanks to God mm. for this incredible blessing that, um, that, that, he get, that it came about for us. And it would be, instead of just thinking vaguely about it, but actually to sit down and say, oh, wow, this is good. You are a good father. And to, to share with the family so they don't forget all the steps that we didn't see at the time that were definitely God's hand in, in us yeah. moving here and um, to give thanks to God and to give him the glory. And, um, you know, I was uh, chatting to Jen and thinking that, you know, as, as, as a family, there's so many opportunities that we can have, uh, you can have, for when you can see where God's hand has been on a blessing in your family and that you could maybe make it into tradition and to say have a, a Thanksgiving meal or um, make it a special event where you tell your, your children, your grandchildren, what actually happened and how you ended up in that situation. Um, or it could even be over Christmas, you know, that you as a dad sit with your children, um, a bit like the rabbi in Jerusalem with the children around. It could be your nephews, your nieces, your own kids, or even your grandchildren, whoever and you tell them the story of Jesus and what that actually means to you. Mm. Um, and that becomes like a tradition where they say, come on, Dad, come on, Dad, we want to listen to that story again. We want to hear that and make it exciting and fun. Um, that's what I was thinking about. You know, one, one of the things we do every year is we go away for our anniversary. Uh, we try to go away for a week or a weekend or even a night away. And um, instead of just going away now, we're going to actually spend some time thanking God and thanking God for our marriage, um, for the years we've had together, thanking God for letting us overcome some of the obstacles we've had in our marriage. Um, it hasn't always been easy. And, uh, and so we, we were thinking of that um, and making it meaningful yeah. um, and, and putting things in your life where you celebrate and thank God and make it meaningful. Make it meaningful. Yeah. I think that's the key word. Meaningful and yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the big thing. Yeah. So that's where we were thinking and we're thinking that uh, 2022 can be a year of uh, giving God the glory. Giving him thanks. And giving him thanks and putting in some traditions as families. And you can come up, I'm sure, with some amazing, um, uh, almost, it's not an excuse, it's, a, it's, it's a, a looking for an opportunity to thank God yeah. and make it meaningful for you and your family. Yeah, I think that, you know, where our focus is, is where our heart is. And, you know, mm. if we can have a heart of just wanting to say, thank you, God, for that. I noticed that. It was so meaningful to mm. me. I see what you've done, and I want to tell my children about it. And that your children and your grandchildren have know for sure what your thoughts are and your feelings are and your struggles are. And, um, and to whom you give the glory, because it's not for ourselves, is it? It's for God. And where your faith is, yes. where your foundation is, yeah. and why you as parents or grandparents are secure 
just the way you are, irrespective of the situation or the circumstances that surround us, particularly, you know, through COVID and that sort of thing. When we stand, stand strong and they know why. Yeah. Because we know God is with us. Yeah. You know, Gus was talking um, recently and I mentioned that uh, Jenny's uh, mom does that blessing. And uh, when Thomas went down to Cape Town, we had a family meal and uh, we sent him off um, with a father's blessing. And so one of the traditions that we're going to do going forward, um, Jen and I, for the church, as long as we are part of the church, is that at uh, New Year's first message, we're going to do a blessing for the family, for the family of the church. And so I've written this blessing and I'm going to read it to you. And then uh, Jen will end up and uh, we'll have a worship song. So if I can just ask you to all close your eyes. And just be in a position of receiving this, this blessing from David. Thank you. To our friends in this community of Eston and Middleover, we love you. We are glad that you were chosen to be part of our lives. May God guide you in his ways and grant you peace. May each of you fulfill the purpose for which you were created. May you have the courage necessary to face 2022 and beyond. May you have a passion for God that is greater than it was. May you dream more than you did. May you expect more than you think is possible. May you choose wisely and your heart be in tune to God's leading. You are strategically placed at a time such as this to become everything he has made you to be. You have people to influence that you are to meet. You have lives to change that are waiting for you. A place where you can grow, a place where you can be fruitful, a place where the future is changed because of your presence. May you see God in every sunrise and in every sunset. May you respect May you and your respective families be blessed to become giants in faith under the mighty God, hand of God. May you embrace the future with assurance that God is with you. I pray that you soar to the heights of God's destiny for your life. May you live freely and well so that you can honor God in everything that you do. I speak a blessing of his presence over your life your family, your home, your loneliness, your victories, your valleys, your mourning, your dancing, your weeping, and your rejoicing. I speak the blessing of our almighty God. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. And I really hope that you'll spend some, some of today even sitting together and thinking about ways in which you can create some of these traditions in your families and maybe your children can come up with some ideas. And let's, let's be better. Let's be richer. Let's be deeper. And let's shine for God. Bye from me. And bye from me. Be blessed and I hope 2022 is better than you would ever, ever have Been dreamed. An extraordinary year. An extraordinary year. Yes. In faith, with God, with us. Amen. Amen. Let's listen to a wonderful song and may you have a wonderful day and I shall wait for you to sing to me <laughs> when I come to church. God bless. Looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. Yes. In church. See you next okay. Sunday. Bye. Bye.